So we're looking at my ANET A8. That's what it was labeled when I purchased it on eBay, but it's a Troncy TRONXY 802M, I believe. The 802E has a stepper motor mounted right here, so it's a direct drive unit, and that unit is exactly the same for all intents and purposes as an ANET A8. But I got the M version, which is the Bowden tube version, and I have since modified it. So now it has three Bowden tubes going in, and there is an intersection right here behind my finger where they can all meet. And so I'm going to be printing here, and that will be the next video of me printing in three colors. But you can also print in three materials. So back to the, uh, the printer itself. This is, uh, like I said, an 802M, and if you go looking for that on eBay, I did a search this morning, and I found it for $161. So it's getting so inexpensive. This is uh, my new favorite printer. Better than the other one in the last video because of the aluminum bed. Now let me show you why I love, I love that aluminum bed. If I go here to prepare and then level bed, boom, it's gonna use this proximity sensor. That blue thing is a, uh, is a, is a inductive proximity sensor that can sense the metal or magnets or that kind of a thing. So it doesn't even need to touch the bed. And it's cheap. I bought that thing for $3 on eBay and just plugged it in and, and, and modified the firmware so that it could do this. This mess, mesh bed leveling will make a dynamic model of the bed. So it can be bowed, it can be warped, it can the bed can be any which way and uh, within reason, obviously. You can't print on a vertical bed. <laughs> um, but it can be any which way, and the software will, uh, will account for it. So it'll constantly be moving the x-axis, or I'm sorry, the z-axis as it's printing to make up for the undulations in the bed. Really fancy stuff for, you know, something that you can get on a $160 printer. Let's zoom in on that head. And we'll talk about the uh, talk about the actual head itself. So I made that the um, this is uh, all 3D printed for the most part. Now it uses the components which came on the printer itself. That is an E3D V6 hot end. So this is an E3D V5. Or I'm sorry, this is an E3D V5 in here. E3D V6 hot ends are better. This has 11 fins. If you go looking for them on eBay, look for 11 fins. The E3D V5s only have 10 fins. The E3D V5s are a little bit longer and they're just not quite as good. But I was trying to come up with the easiest solution if you bought this printer to get to three uh, tubes, so three Bowden tubes. Um, so for $2 and some odd cents for the sensor, and then, you know, eight bucks a piece for the steppers. And uh, these, believe it or not, these fittings came with the stepper motors. Uh, so basically you just have to buy the steppers, some tubes, that sensor. And the big thing you need to buy is the uh, new computer. Now you can use a Ramps 1.4 board, but I have elected to use a Roomba board. So let me show you guys that. This is a Roomba board. Let me get that in the light better. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six slots for stepper motors. If you're gonna use a Ramps 1.4 board, you're gonna have to solder on another stepper motor driver bay. Now you can easily, not easily, but you can definitely do that. Um, it's just so much easier and cleaner to have it all in one uh, board. So I went and paid the 60 bucks for this board. Um, I think it was well worth it. And the reason you need three, or uh, three more drivers. So you have X, Y, and Z, and then you have color one, color two, and color three. So that's why you need six stepper motor drivers. Um, so yeah, so uh, this turned out pretty good. Um, it, it ramps 1.4 setup can be purchased for like, you know, under 30 bucks, and then you're talking another 20 bucks, so $50 total, so still under $200, and you can have a three color 3D printer if you're technical enough to do it. So that was the goal with that um, whole carriage. Now the drawback is that this carriage uh, has an 87 millimeter retract. So from the melt chamber here up to where the filament needs to retract to in order for the next filament to be able to, because there's a shared line, right? So they can't 
all three colors can't be in the line at once. And they all join right here. So you gotta pull each color back 87 millimeters in between uh, color changes. So that's not ideal, slows the printer down a bit. Um, but it's definitely workable. This is a very similar to de design to what Prusa is actually using. Like the legitimate Prusa i3 Mark II, which is supposed to be a fantastic printer, uh, has this same uh, design. So um, I wanted to get something better going. And so I've been working for the last couple of days on this um, monstrosity that you see here. <laughs> now this is a direct drive right there, right? So there's your little loading lever, all that's printed, right? So that loads your direct drive and that direct drive is gonna feed into a uh, E3D V6 hot end, which is right in there, or the cold end, the radiator part here. And that, um, I had to order that special. And the reason is that, that special um, cold end is different from the cold ends that come with the diamond head. We'll get to the diamond head in a second. But the ones that come with it have this fitting up top here, which is the like, pipe fitting. And there's this giant open area there, and then that just leaves lots of sloppy room for uh, a flexible filament, such as a TPU or a Ninja Flex, to rattle around. And I don't want that. So bought the better uh, cold end, was able to just mount it into the diamond head uh, printer, or, um, the diamond head hot end, and yeah, it works great for the direct drive. But there's also two more uh, Bowden tube setups. So these will be my other two colors. So what I'll be able to do with this is have a uh, direct drive, flexible material with a very short distance to travel. Uh, it, will, it will not get bound up. I won't have any problems printing with the flexible material. But for the stiffer materials, I will have the two other colors. So this nice, setup took me quite a few days to draw up on the computer. Because I was mounting this Bowden, or the direct drive servo up here on top, I had to move the fan. Normally the fan sits up there. So let's take a look at that. This is a diamond head, uh, just your hot end, or your diamond. So that's what they call it. I, I don't know why, maybe because that looks like a diamond. Uh, but it's a three-way splitter and it's a mixing chamber. So I can actually feed all three filaments at one time and it will mix the colors right there in the, in the hot chamber. Um, and so obviously this is buried inside of this. Now with me, with my design, the fan here catches the air, blows it through, and it exhausts right inside of there. Uh, kind of blows out that way. Normally, what you would see uh, and almost all the designs which I saw on the internet have a fan mounted on top. So that's going to blow the air straight down and then out past all three radiators. Um, but I needed, like I said, I needed that top area for uh, the direct drive motor. So um, I'm pretty proud of this design because look at, the, look at the size compared to the fan, just the fan unit here. It's not too much bigger and I was able to get uh, the cooling fan for the uh, hot end itself and the part cooling fan with this little uh, detachable sort of a uh, blower nozzle um, replaceable easily replaceable if you bugger it up somehow um, yeah and then so there's the uh, the the spring-loaded sort of arm to help you load the filament okay so why I recommend this printer now over the other printer I went looking this morning and I found this printer for $161. Uh, 802, or Troncy, T-R-O-N-X-Y, 802M on eBay. You'll find it. Um, but you can do this fancy thing here, which is bed leveling. So this sensor, again, it's a $2.50 sensor on, on eBay, uh, will... Uh, take nine spots on the bed here and it will make a mesh out of the bed so it models where the bed sits and I can have this side being like you know quarter of an inch higher than all the other sides and it will print it's got a model of the bed now so it will print 
on that slanted bed and won't have a problem with it. The bed, the bed can also be like twisted or bowed or all kinds of funky stuff can be happening with the bed. And because it's dynamically sort of printing on, a, on an undulating surface that it's modeled, you're not gonna have a problem uh, with bed leveling. So that's just a pretty fantastic feature. Thank you, Joseph Prusa. Yeah, so there it is, the, uh, the modifications I've done to the 802M printer. And in the next video, we will see me printing in three colors.